The next speaker is Paul Whitehead. With taking the power back and putting the common unity back in community. The Gorilla Gardener, rebel with the cause. Please welcome Paul Whitehead. I run a little business in Blackpool called Pedalable Edibles. It's basically me on a bike with a trailer and I go into people's backyards and gardens. I create a growing space, I condition all the soil, I propagate all the non gmo seeds, plant it out for them, take care of all the plants, right away from the Basically designed for people who need to have the time, the knowledge of pensions because you need a lot to do it. Um, and one of the things that I'm trying to do at the moment is inspire people to get a localisation of food production. Because one of the problems we've got is, you know, by centralisation. Um, all the corporations like Monsanto are coming through. I've actually seen this morning an article in The Independent from yesterday saying that the EU have now relaxed the laws and GMO crops could be planted in the UK as early as next year. So this is where uh, we really need to pull our finger out and coming together as communities and rising up against this stuff. Now this isn't really a presentation, I'm not presenting anything new to you. It's more, I guess, of a call to arms, I guess, a rallying of the troops. Because I think, you know, we come here every week and we're all very friendly, we're all very smiley. We, you know, open our minds to a lot of new information. But I don't really see many people going out there in the physical world trying to positively engage and change things because this is what we really need. And one of the good sort of, I guess, the examples of that is the fracking issues. I mean, a few of us from here have been down to Barton Moss, and I, I obviously know that people have got you know jobs and kids and things like that. But we have to start prioritising our lives and thinking what's most important because you're not going to have a job or a family if your water and your soil and all your air quality is destroyed. We have to get this into our heads from the get-go. Um, and I guess the only way we can defeat the corporatocracy, which is what is destroying the world, is through a united community. Um, we're facing fracking, austerity, geoengineering, fluoride in the children's milk in schools is something that absolutely baffled my head when I saw it in the Gazette, Blackpool Gazette. I thought, how can they even be contemplating that? I've actually got a document downloaded from a website that states that it, you know, it needs to be disposed of in a toxic waste place. So it's kind of like how can you even you know, be contemplating putting that in there? There's a larger agenda to that. I mean, I think Alex will probably drift into that um, at some point in this talk, because I know he really does know a lot about that side of it, with the, the old Nazis and the gulags putting stuff in you know, the water back then. Um, but yeah, we, we just have to basically change our incentives, because at the moment we're getting out of bed and we're going to do our jobs in a fictional economic model that basically you know, rules our lives. We have to change the incentives to a basic sort of you know, um, thing in human life where it's respect and love for all things on, on this planet, basically. I think money is the, probably the worst invention that we've ever had. It really does ruin everything. I mean, I've been involved in, say, about three or four community projects for three years since I moved here. And they're all environment projects, but they're all relying on money. So we've got willing volunteers like me you know, quite a lot of the people are elderly people, but these projects will not go ahead if there is no funding. Now that's ridiculous to me. You know, people are willing to go and do some good in their own communities, but they can't do it because there's no money. And of course, the first thing that gets cut in the austerity is the environment, which is insane because when you think about it, how can any of us do anything without a healthy environment? So we have to really, you know, look at this and start thinking, prioritising things. Um, again, I guess um, Rob's just touched on it. Politics is not the answer, clearly. You know, many, many people have been debating in the past months who to vote for in the elections, and I just, you know, I'm of the school where I think it's absolutely pointless. There's no point in choosing your own master. We have to now, again, localise everything, start taking back our own individual sovereignty, but at the same time, recognising that we are part of a human family. So we're not the UK, you know, we don't need to be, you know, thinking in nation states. Think as a global human family. There's no reason why we can't do this. Um, it's taking the power back, so we just have to start deciding for ourselves what we do. 
It's like I was in the Gazette about three weeks ago, near where I live, just near South Shore. There was a little sort of semicircle of um, soil that the council used to plant wildflowers in. Since the cuts came in, they've, they've neglected it, so it just sat there doing nothing. So um, I, it's actually near Notriani's ice cream power, if anyone knows where that is. So I just took it upon myself, because I live around the corner, to go and plant some lettuce and some kale in there. And um, the guy next door in the shop just came along and says, oh, I know someone in the Gazette who might actually feature this. So I got in there about um, doing the guerrilla gardening, and that's kind of where I'm coming at it from. It's me on my own, and I was able to, you know, get there, and people were looking at me and recognising me and saying, oh, thanks a lot for doing that. Ironically, the trail that I use for um, the plants was stolen that very night. So I don't remember if it was someone that saw what I was doing that day and went round the backs, not not as I put it in my backyard, and it, it went. Luckily, I managed to speak to the report. She got that in to the uh, into the, the article, which again I got some real really nice messages on the website and people contacts in the Gazette saying, "Oh, we feel really sorry for him because he's done a good deed for the community. Can we buy him another trailer?" And I was like, "Well, this is nice. There actually really are some nice people around." I didn't accept it because I was working, and I thought, well, it's only £65, I can pay for it myself, but I appreciated the sentiment, and it made me feel like if we, more of us do this sort of thing, then there are people that can come together and help. My dream is to have armies of guerrilla gardeners going around and identifying all these wastelands that the council's neglect, I mean thousands of people. What could the authorities do? You're going out there and doing a good deed for that community. There is nothing they could do. All you've got to do is knock on the doors of where people are living and say, hey, you know that bit of crap at the bottom of your garden there? Do you mind if we come around and clear it up and plant some fruit and veg that anyone can take? Who is in the right mind is going to oppose that? This is what I think we need to be doing. It doesn't have to be just that either, going knocking on people's doors and asking if they need anything doing. People on my allotment, I've got an allotment on Cherry Tree, and I talk to the older people, and they tell me how it used to be, you know, where everyone used to pull together during the two world wars. We're facing hardships and everyone will pull together. I don't see that now. I see people now who's just every man for himself. And that, since I guess the well, end of World War II, we saw the creation of the United Nations and the EU, which is again more centralisation. Now that's how they've done it. They've tricked us into thinking that more centralisation will solve all our problems, but it's disconnected us as, as a community. And that's why we have to just start recognising this bypassing politics, ignore what all the all this stuff says in the media, and just go out there and do stuff. I'm, I'm actually going to put at the bottom there is a, is a little list, and it's going to be Pedalable Edibles, Community Spirit, Missions of Goodwill. I want people from this group to put the name down and have contact, whether it be a phone or an email, and just, I'll get in touch, and we'll start networking, we'll start workshopping things we can do, going out there. If it starts off being the Gorilla Garden, great. I'm quite happy to do that. But I don't want it to just be that. It can be anything. Making crafts, giving stuff away, bypassing the monetary system is something me and Rob are doing at the moment. Because he's a builder and I'm a gardener. He wants to grow food in his back garden and I need some building work doing. So he came down and had a look and says, Yeah, I'll, I'll do this for you. And I said, Right, well, let's, he was going to pay, I was going to pay him 50 quid. And I said, Well, I'm if you want some work doing, I'll grow your food for you. So then we've bypassed it. So it's like that time bank system kind of thing. You know what I mean? So it's again just networking with communities and realising the skills that we all have and using them. Um, now I've just been to Italy. Um, one of the projects I was volunteering for was Grow Blackpool, which is part of Groundwork, a national green charity. And uh, a couple of years ago they went out to Italy to a nature reserve and they took uh, some of the, the more younger volunteers um, and it was kind of like an idea of where to kind of network sort of um, different countries, you know, ways of doing things in the community on, based on, on the environment. Um, and this year, um, the idea was to kind of network disadvantaged youth inclusion in green spaces, rural and urban. So myself and the guy who used to run World Blackpool were invited there. And it was people from all over. Um, Europe, people from Bosnia, from Bulgaria, Spain, Portugal. And the one thing that really made me feel great was when I got there, they're all relative strangers, and within half an hour, we're all talking about our projects. We're all inviting each other to our projects, saying, oh, come and stay with me. 
power areas. This is the power of community, and that's on a European level. You know what I mean? If we could do this in St. Anne's, Blackpool, you know, Thornton, there's no, you know, there's no reason why we can't change things. Um, and again, one of the major proof that uh, the people have the power, especially with the fracking and a lot that's going on at the moment, is in Bentley, Australia. Um, I don't know if anyone knows about this. People in the fracking sort of uh, movement probably will. But um, there was a company called Metgasco, and they were trying to do coal steam um, gas mining there. And uh, the camp that they set up started off with about 50 people. It doubled the following weekend. It doubled the following weekend. It doubled again and doubled again until there was like 300 people there. And then it got to something like 2,000 and forced the authorities into revoking the license. We have the numbers. It's just people are very, very reluctant, I guess, to a certain degree, to stick their neck out. Neck out. There's a lot of people who maybe think they want to go down there, but because of their own jobs or this, that and the other, they, they don't prioritise it right. And this is where we have to start thinking what is important. Um, and while I was in Italy, I also met a woman, a very, very inspiring woman, called Maria Rita di Osogna, or Sonia however you pronounce it in Italian, and um, she's a scientist and a physicist, and she was brought up in the area that this nature reserve was in, which is on the east coast of Italy, in a region called Abruzzo. Uh, she lives in California now, but um, back in 2007, um, a British oil company, I can't remember the name at the moment, um, wanted to set up some offshore, offshore drilling rigs uh, right near where the nature reserve is. And someone she knows let her know about this. Um, and she was like, what the hell, I can't let that happen in my own near where I grew up. So she got involved and she came back to her own um, area. And over a two or three year period, managed to do many, many talks all over the, the region. And they rallied 40,000 people to protest on the streets. 40,000. Now that is amazing. I mean, I know the Italians have got this sort of, uh, you know, red blood, you know, very high, high powered sort of th thinking and what have you. But, you know, we can do this too. We might be a reserve nation, but we have to start thinking and, and pulling our fingers out. Um, and I've, I've actually spoke to Vanessa Vine, who's um, mm -hmm. one of the, the major sort of anti-fracking um, people at the moment, and trying to, to work out something where we can get Maria over, because there's a lot of people in the fracking sort of uh, way of thinking that they don't really take on board what's being said unless somebody has some letters after the name, like a scientist. I mean, we've only got mothers and grandmothers and fathers and, you know, people in the community are standing up. We don't really have anyone, I guess in our brain has some sort of credibility because he's worked in the industry, which is great, he's glad, I'm glad he's, he's on board with us. But to actually have someone who's an actual physicist and a scientist saying that this is a ridiculous, you know, process, um, he's really needed, I think, in this country. Um, so I'm hoping that we can we can get some sort of funding um, to to bring her over, paying for her flights. And Rob says he'll you know quite happily put her up here, um, put her a, a, a show on here, and she can stay over at his place. Um, and we need to do it now because Quadrilla are coming back. I don't know whether you know this, but they just put the planning application in with LCC for Little Plumpton which is five miles down the road from Blackpool. So they're not happy with causing two earthquakes in 2011. They want to do it even more. Um, and there's already, uh, I guess, like a plan for a community protection camp that we've seen obviously down in Balkan, we've seen in Barton Moss. There's now one just been set up in Daily Hume in the last few days because uh, eye gas are going down there too. Um, I think there's also one in, um, I think it's Crawberry Hill in Hull. So they're popping up all over. Um, that 60% of the UK up for fracking is coming. We've got to stop this somehow. So, yeah, it's just the people power thing. It has to happen and we have to start, you know, coming together. Um, guerrilla garden is one way to do it. Doing good deeds just generally is going to, you know, get people on, on the side, I think. Even if they're sitting on the fence or they're completely sort of ignorant to this, to this process. If you go out there and knock on the door and ask them or do something good for them, they're likely to listen to you rather than you just trying to rant at them or whatever. Um, and I think again, you know, you've got to put a bit back. 
you know, we're, we're all, I guess we've been conditioned into always taking, taking, taking. And, uh, you know, we live in a world that is not perfect, but we as people can change it. Anyone, you know, can, can go out there and do something. It's just basically having the balls to do it. I mean, I've never done public speaking before. I was in a band for three years. I stood on stages in front of two, three thousand people. You know, I had long hair spinning my head about making noises like a pig and a cow, you know, ridiculous extreme metal stuff. But, you know, this is more daunting because I'm seeing people's intimate faces as an important subject. And my friend, Brent, is my oldest mate here. He's, he's been, you know, with me on this mad journey as we're all and he's going to come up and do something very similar. He's never done this before. And he's winging it. He's got no notes. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he's got more balls than me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think um, Bren's knowledge is massive. He's the sort of guy, and I love him to death, he just disappears into his cave for about three months. And he comes out with this vast amount of knowledge. And you know, we just stood outside there, and he's talking all this stuff. And I'm just like, mate, you're unbelievable. And me and Alex have kicked him up the arse to come and give a bit of a talk. Because he, I mean, I'm not going to probably be a public speaker. I'm more of a doer. I like going out there and physically doing something. Um, but Bren, you know, I think he's got, he's got the potential to be one of the best speakers I think this country has to offer. His knowledge is vast. And um, not to uh, put too much pressure on you there, mate. <laughs> but it's got to be done. So anyway, that was my time. <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to leave that piece of paper at the back. So I mean, just just get in, you know, leave your contact details, and I'll get in touch. And we can try and do something. Um, and um, I'm just going to leave you with one little quote that I came up with myself. Community spirit is the establishment's kryptonite. Thank you and good night. Aha!